Diane. Mm-hmm. The question would, uh, what is the status of uh, radical politics in the Asian community? I think that the analysis is out there, and I think that what you're doing right now is important because we need to get out um, more of Yuri's analysis. But I do think that the, the movement, I think that there's a lot of motion and a lot of figuring out of how we create change, right? And, um, but I also think that there's a lot of growing to do, a lot of, but, but I, but I would say that people like Yuri, as well as many of the black theorists, the black radical theorists, the black radical tradition and black activism, you know, earlier you were asking about its influence on Asian American organizing, and I think it's still fundamental to today's organizing and to what's happening that the Asian American movement is drawing on our own ideas, but also very much on the black radical tradition. How would you describe the relationship between uh, black or African people and Asians today? Well, I think there's a lot of misunderstanding and stuff going on, uh, and especially, you know, if you look at the different classes of our communities, then there's a lot of clashing going on with the, you know, with the bourgeoisie, you know, the, the, the capitalists in our communities, uh, that uh, they're into this uh, competition kind of trip. Uh, and as you come down the scale, I think that, uh, you know, you find that there are, you know, as you get into the working class, into the more oppressed sectors of our community, I think you'll see a lot more people that understand the similarities of, of our problems and our struggles so that uh, there's a basis for developing, you know, uh, unity and understanding. So, yeah, it's, uh, it's like they used to say in the old days, the future is bright, <laughs> the road is crooked. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, as I was mentioning earlier before, I, uh, my experiences have been different between uh, as far as comparing and contrasting my time in Brook Park, Minneapolis, and to Los Angeles, uh, I, I don't feel like there's ever been, me growing up, there hasn't really been ever really an antagonizing issue between the black and Asian communities. I mean, yeah, there have, you know, been um, anti-black prejudice. You know, I can speak of that firsthand from my experience with my family. I mean, my, my partner, Tiffany Wallace, she's black, and my mom actually disowned uh, me for several months and didn't want to speak to me <laughs> oh, for a while because of that. Um, but um, as far as Los Angeles goes, Inglewood goes, um, it's been interesting. There's, there's there's contradictions. There are people that have been accepting with my relationship with her, and there are those that have not. Um, there are some people that are accepted with my presence in community, and then there's some that aren't. I mean, um, I mean, just a few weeks ago with my participation with the uh, African People's Tribunal uh, with the uh, allegations of General Taco. Um, I had been in participation in various levels. Um, the Tuesday of the deliberation, when the panelists came to the FIBA Center to deliberate, um, I was with uh, Billion helping, uh, making sure that no one was harassing the panelists. And uh, there was this one black woman who uh, named Sheila Ward got very upset with me for the fact that she wasn't allowed to get near the FIBA Center, but me, her calling me an Oriental, was allowed to. Yeah, so we had that, and then just a few days ago, um, I actually almost got in a fight um, off of Manchester Ramon at Jack in a Box after um, uh, training with um, a comrade of mine in Watts, who General uh, Sunni Ali Shakur, who... Um, Grew up and was babysat by Yuri when he was younger. Um, after heading back and decided trying to uh, grab a bite at Jack in the Box, I actually encountered um, some. Um, I guess what I guess it relates to the um, an example of gender oppression. Um, I had witnessed a woman uh, trying to get out of her car. She was struggling out of her car, and as she was had her foot out of the car, she got pulled back in. I reversed out of the drive through and parked right next to the car where this whole thing was happening, and I was yelling, hey, get away. It was like, stop it. What are you doing? It was like, get your hands off her. Next thing you know, there's this um, larger uh, black gentleman uh, comes out of the car and 
suddenly it he's he's not really concerned with her. He's more concerned with me and telling me to mind my own business. And right there and then I'm like, I you know it's like all the training I had, part of it kind of got out of the window, but I was still able to stand my ground as far as to let him know that he shouldn't be allowed touching her like that. I mean, he had his arm around her neck trying to keep her in the car. And it got to a point where he, him and I were face to face and he was ready to throw a punch, but I had my keys in my hand. I had pressed against his neck. That's when he kind of chuckled and backed off and he left uh, the jack in the box that day. So that's been my my in, interaction with the black community. There's always plus and minuses with me being around South L.A. <laughs> I can imagine. Diane. Yeah, I'll answer that in this way. When the, you know, when Richard Aoki was accused of being an FBI and that broke out, the, the, it could have very easily have split the black and Asian communities. And I think the inverse happened. I think that the black community sure. mm-hmm. came out. Mm-hmm so strong in the black movement, but beyond the black movement, many in the black communities came out in strong in support of Richard or, um, and I went to the Bay Area and in a book tour that was planned um, from well before this, this, this was announced. And the book tour was three weeks after the accusation was made. And I mean, they were. I mean, the black community filled these talks. They were very interested. Some of them happened at black venues. It wasn't just the the top leaders of the Black Panther Party, Bobby Seale, uh, Tariqa Lewis, and others, uh, uh, Emory Douglas, really defending Richard. Um, but also, people in the black community ha- were not just going to accept that. They were questioning, right? They were going to think about it and, and be very clear and not allow an easy divide and conquer to happen. And um, and I think that speaks volumes to to the to the question that you're posing about Afro Asian relations. And we have about two minutes left. Can I get a quick comment on the future of the relationship between uh, how do we build better relationships? I guess is my question. How do we build better relationships, Brother Mo? First, yeah, I, I, there's a lot of issues that uh, you know that we could unite around, right? One of the things that we're working on is uh, the Bandung Conference and bringing people's awareness about what that really meant in terms of Africa and Asia coming together, uh, both on the anti-colonial issues and, and just in terms of us struggling together to build a better world, right? And that's that's the basic bottom line, right? But that's what Yuri believed in, right? That us working together, we could build a better world. And, yeah, we're going to do it. Mm-hmm. Dave? Um, you know, just... Pretty much what Mo said. I mean, on my end, I just feel like we just we just got openly discuss uh, the issues that occur between our communities. You know, as far as um, you know, the reactionary members in the black community having this anti-Asian uh, ideology and rhetoric, and the same goes with uh, members in the Asian community with this anti-black uh, mm-hmm. rhetoric. You know, we just have to discuss what is it that. Uh, we are dealing with as far as the um, antagonism that occurs in our communities. We just have to be more open to discuss about it. Diane? Yeah, I think that we should do like like Yuri. I think we need to read and learn the histories of Afro-Asian solidarities. I think that we need to build the leadership of ordinary people. I think we need to listen to others. And I think that we need to see our own oppression connected to the oppression of others. You know, it's interesting if we look in Africa and Asia today, especially Africa and China, Africa and India, they are developing excellent relationships, develop relationships to break mm-hmm. away from the kind of European, Western, imperialist, colonial, neocolonial model that's characterized our existence with Europeans since the days of slavery. Africa and Asians are breaking away from the Englands, the France, the Germany, the United States, and forming new and principal relationships with the Chinas and the Indians and Malaysia. So I think that may even be a role model mm-hmm. for us to use as uh, ethnic groups and national groupies inside mm-hmm. the United States mm-hmm. of America. Mm-hmm. Uh, we've got to wrap up. I'd like to thank all my guests. You know, it's been a good discussion. Wish we had more time. But uh, any, uh, Diane, for people to get your book, how can they track down your book? Um. Heartbeat of Struggle, The Revolutionary Life of Yuri Kochiyama, put out by University of Minnesota Press. I mean, it's on Amazon. It's on the University of Minnesota Press website. 
um, and for a while they were offering discounts on Amazon. Not that I'm trying to produce <laughs> to promote them, but it is a good place to get the book. Mm-hmm. Independent bookstores. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, we thank you very much. And uh, this program can be heard for the next 90 days at kpfk.org under audio archives. Scroll to freedom now. I'd like to thank our guests, Diane Fujini, uh, Brother Mo Nishida, David Dang, and all those who made this program possible. And as always, we stand ready for the revolution. All part to the people.